What is going on, everybody? You are listening to Let's Talk Music with me, Mark Ridge, and this is episode number one. I got Jason Wells over here with me. What's going on, Jason? Oh, well, not much, but a whole lot. Yeah? <laughs> what have you been up to, man? Anything uh, new? Well, we got a, just playing a lot. Just got off, got, got back from a little trip and, uh, nice. and had a local show, pretty good uh, local show uh, last Saturday, so that was Hell a lot yeah. of fun. So, uh, so yeah. where do you guys get back from? Where did you go? Uh, we went out to, uh, well, every year, um, the first weekend of June, we go out to uh, this uh, bike weekend out in Steel City, Nebraska. It's Hell a little yeah. bitty town out in the Nebraska, but uh, a bunch of bikers come out, and, and uh, nice. we've been playing out there for um, about the last seven or eight years now. Nice, dude. Yeah. I so, think uh, Jeff went out there with you guys once, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, a couple he, times. Yeah, he's been Hell out yeah. there a few times. That's yeah. awesome, man. So that usually turns into about a week or two week tour. That's fun, yeah. dude. Just get to go all what? How far west do you guys get? It's fifteen hundred miles. Fifteen hundred miles. Yeah. I know, That's a good wait, haul, man. No, I think it's that might be round trip. Round trip. Yeah. yeah. Well, seven fifty, seven fifty, right? Yeah, Somewhere around there. I'm not. It's a ten math hours. Genius. Nice. It's ten hours. <laughs> well, here, dude. Let's crack open a beer. I got some People's Boiler Gold oh, over here. Sweet. Wanted to bust out the fancy stuff. Shout out, People's. Come on with that oh. sponsorship. Yeah. People's is great. Oh yeah, love them, man. Best beer. That was. Uh, cheers. Cheers. That was some of my uh, most. Oh man, some of my most favorite times playing at People's. Yeah. On Tuesdays, dude. Oh man. They always have so many kick-ass bands there. I really love what they're doing. I was thinking, like, that could be a really cool thing uh, to be able to link up with them and talk with bands. They always have bands coming through and musicians, you know, mm-hmm. solo acts and stuff like that coming oh, yeah. through. It'd mm-hmm. be really sick to link yeah. up with them and talk with some of the bands that come through there. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because they're, uh, yeah, the, um, James, uh, I think, is probably still doing yeah, I, that. Yeah, I'm not positive. i got to check in on that. I don't know who's yeah, running that over there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he gets all the the touring bands and yeah, it's good. It's, it's uh, you know, all those touring bands are always looking for a, a weeknight, so yeah. it's good that a place like People's has a exactly that's a the place hard, for it and a built-in crowd. Yeah, you know, that's the hard part. It's like you know, you're on the road and you're on the road Monday through Thursday too, not just right. Friday Saturday. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, you got to fill in that time somewhere. Yeah, and find yeah. find reasons to, you know, if you don't have. If you're not selling tickets and selling out crowds, and yep. you know it's tough to get uh, Tuesdays and yeah. Mondays, and <laughs> most definitely, dude, those are tough days. Hey, um, so I want to, I want to, like, I was thinking uh, at the beginning of these shows, I was wanting to ask the guests the same thing every week. So this is the question that I was thinking of: is what is your favorite meal of the day, breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Oh man, I think breakfast. Breakfast? Actually. Yeah. When when I have a good Big breakfast like bacon eggs, toast, yeah. hash browns and stuff. And that's my nice. favorite. Yeah. Dude, I know you can't go wrong with a comforting yeah. breakfast. I think that I'm gonna find that be like the number one answer for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and when we're it was kind it's been kind of a um <clears throat> a rule on the road. Yeah. That um we'll go we'll go and spend money on food for breakfast. Nice. Because you can usually find pretty cheap breakfast. You can. And you can't really mess up Eggs <laughs> yeah. and toast, bacon and bacon, oh, you know, and biscuits and gravy. Yeah. So, and it gets you a good start for the day. Shit, so man, when you're on the road, sticks to your ribs, yeah. man. I love it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, yeah, I'd have to, dude. I don't know. I, I see. I thought of that question, and then I was thinking, like, well, fuck. I don't even know what I prefer. I don't know. I have to be on the breakfast side of the fence, but you can't pass up something like good for dinner I don't oh know. yeah you know what i mean yeah. i can't even think of anything off the top of my head i know right <laughs> i know i have so many favorites and but yeah. then when anybody asks like see i i just told my wife the other day it's like i think i eat out of necessity just because they i hear it keeps you alive but, that's what they say yeah <laughs> i mean i don't know but but so like i do eat and i like food but yeah. i'm not really a a foodie? Yeah. Yeah. No. no Just um, sustenance. Yeah. Give me fuel to keep <laughs> rocking. <laughs> so uh, how long have you been playing music, man? Oh, man. Take so, us back. Yeah. So that's, uh, I, um, I, I got my first guitar when I was in like seventh grade for okay. Christmas, and it was a Terminator from Toys R Us. It had the speaker <laughs> built into it, you yeah. know, like a 9-volt battery in the back. Hell yeah. But it was like an electric guitar, you know. It's like you could plug it in too. No, oh, nice. So, but you know, it was, it was a piece of junk. You yeah, know? it's like the first, like the first act, yeah, you know, dude. or something. But uh, 
So anyway, that was in seventh grade, and man, I learned. I was listening to my dad's vinyl albums, mm -hmm. and I listened for real. The first song that I, I, I had I already been listening to vinyl albums like growing since I growing up. Yeah. And um, but when I got that guitar, the first album I had to put on was Deep Purple, Smoke on the Water. Hell yeah! That's for real. I the mean, song that I learned. Dude, on vinyl. that is that is the. I mean, it's just a, the stereotype that is true to the end. The very first song I learned as well, Smoke on the Water, dude. I yeah. mean, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Dude, come on. I mean, I that was is like, the classic. I just got this thing, but I think yeah, I can do that. I can do this. <laughs> and then it gives you the confidence to keep yeah. going, man. Yeah. And it's sad. It's so cool. Dude, you when know? when I first started learning guitar, I don't know. I must have been, I mean, I come from a line of musicians and pickers. You know what I mean? But I must have been... 11 when I actually started really trying to learn how to play and I would just come home from school and lock myself in the room and just yeah. play and play oh, yeah. and play and play and play dude. Yeah, yeah that's all I yeah. did I mean I was I remember we that I got that at home for Christmas we had a couple other places to go and mm -hmm. the rest of the day on Christmas I'm opening presents I was just like I just want this to be over I want to get back home <laughs> yeah. I got that guitar I'm yes. gonna get back to my guitar I don't yeah, care man. about any of this I just <laughs> so uh yeah, and I just spent hours and hours and hours and hours every chance yep. I could get. And I yep. thought I just, you know, but I always had like broken acoustics and almost guitars, you yep. know. <laughs> and uh, I just ever since I can remember, I was like, I want to learn how to play guitar. Yeah. That's all I want to really do. It's, if I do do anything, it's going to be that. That's you awesome. Know? So I. It's kind of stuck with that. Yeah, you since pursued, I can remember. Yeah, you pursued that path pretty <laughs> viciously, man. Yeah. Um, so, how long you've been playing uh, professionally, and or you know, like as your source of income? So, what probably you, yeah. about thirteen, twelve since um, two thousand eight when I, 2008. everybody got laid off in the housing market yeah. crash. Yeah, yeah. So I got I got laid off, and uh, I was off laid off for like. A year and a half yeah and uh so at that time i was like okay well nobody would hire me and uh because they're i was worked at a good job and stuff and so they thought i had to get called back so they wouldn't hire yeah. me so i was like i just started i wanted i was i already kind of decided i was going to go out and pursue music yeah and um so i was really trucking forward but it's, at the same time it's just kind of took the opportunity to learn and test a lot of waters. Yeah. And um, so then I, I went back to work for like four months after like a year okay. of doing music. And then I was like, uh, no, no, no. I could have. So then I quit. And I turned in my notice. And Hell yeah. Like the plant manager come down and was like, so you're quitting <laughs> to play music. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? But he didn't really ask me if he was, if I was sure yeah. because he saw in my face. Just that, the tone of his that, voice. Yeah. That he was he knew I was sure, so yeah. he was like, well, best of luck. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> and it is a grind, that's for oh, sure. I'm yeah. sure that you can attest to that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I don't wish it on anybody, really. <laughs> Dude, it is a grind, man. Yeah. But that um, that layoff was the springboard that just kind of pushed you off into the deep end, man. Yeah, if that, if that really hadn't happened, I don't know. I think maybe at some point I probably would have still hopefully think that I would have decided to do that. Yeah. But um, that definitely was, um, it was like, okay, now. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's, it's very hard to leave the comforts of a good job. You know, I mean, I struggle with that right now. I have a good job and it's nothing crazy. You know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not you know, making six figures or nothing like that. But yeah. I'm paying steady the bills and, and yeah. steady income. And it's really hard to leave when you got kids, man. And I know yeah. that, I mean, you have, how many kids do you have? Well, I have five. So five at the children. time we had just had our fourth. Damn. So then we had another one. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was incredibly hard. Yeah. And the fact that my wife and I are still together and and uh, still going and and I'm still playing music is pretty much a miracle. Yeah. Well, that's a testament to the love. Yeah. Dude. I mean, yeah. It's yeah. It's really hard to find a good woman to stick by your side through the craziness that musicians go through yeah. <laughs> in our own yeah. minds, battling you know our our dreams. You yeah. Know? And, what we want to do. It was a hard, it was a hard road because there was, in this area especially, there wasn't anybody, you know, else, there wasn't anybody else doing mo like full time. Like what I was doing. Yeah. So, I, uh, you know, when I first started, uh, Scott Greason pulled me aside and had bought me lunch and yeah. had a, 
grown up talk with me and and he could tell that I was just gonna keep, keep trying keep and keep going. trying yeah so, man and um but he made friends with me and and uh, he was a big help from the very beginning that's so awesome give me a lot of direction at certain different times you yeah know, but and then uh but yeah I didn't know what I was doing I I, I played in bands and stuff but not not anything like that yeah so you, you know. start out just like playing acoustic stuff singer st- songwriter style yeah i started out just acoustic guitar and i had a, had some looping stuff going on and, nice and i'd been doing that at home for a long time and jamming friends and, and at parties and stuff like that and yeah and uh, so it's been a while since i i would do shows every once in a while you know certain times for different things and, and then uh so I, I was just turning that into a whole lot more you yeah. know real quick yeah <laughs> you know and then also going into new realms like the the bar scene, the club scene, yeah, the, man. the festival scene, the, you know, the just learning all that because I wasn't really in it, you know, I was just navigating the waters. Yeah, yeah, brand so, new. Yeah. yeah, that's like I I feel the same. I feel the same. Like when um, when we got Shorty and the Chef going, I kind of jumped into the deep end with that band, working with just uh, musicians who have been out and doing the damn thing for a long yeah. time and. That was like that was a crash course in in rock and roll. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Jumping right in there and playing shows with some of those cats. Yeah. You know? What oh I mean? yeah. That's um, yeah. I, but god damn, it's there's nothing like it. There's nothing like the feeling of getting off stage after a good show and just that adrenaline pumping. You go home oh, and yeah. you can't sleep all night. You're just yeah. hanging out, drinking some more beers, smoking yeah. cigarettes. <laughs> you can't go to sleep. Yes. Just wait for it to just stop <laughs> vibrating, but it won't. It won't. <laughs> just watching ancient aliens and drifting <laughs> off into the abyss. So, okay, so I had a thing that I did. I tried this idea, and I pulled the first video that you posted on your Facebook band page, on the, music, on the Jason Wells music page. Oh, and I just wanted good. to pull it up here. And uh, just play and just kind of elaborate on where you were and stuff like that. So let's Uh, check it out. Let's hope this works. And there we go. So where was this at? Okay, so that's a um, that's a winery mm-hmm. um, right outside of Springfield, Illinois. Cool. And it's yeah, and uh, Walnut Street Winery. It's it's a little town, but I, I'll, I can't remember the town, but yeah, it's right outside of Springfield. And um, so Lauren and his that's a it's a man and his wife mm-hmm. and. I forgot her name, but uh, they are a beautiful older couple. He's yeah. man, and uh, he he would have a, um, a little studio apartment for us with a nice. kitchen and a bathroom and uh, yeah. cots for us. So we we'd stay up all night, and and uh, we, he pretty much gave us. We'd go down and get cookies out of the cookie jar. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, no, but uh, it, it it was a nice place, and they had bocce ball. That's what it was. And that was outdoor in a big patio, mm-hmm. and the stage is on one end of the patio and down the side. Okay, so like here's the end, and then down this whole side, it's big. It's pretty big, okay. and uh, it's bocce ball. You familiar with bocce ball? I know, uh, I know, I know the name. I can't know. I don't know if I know so the game. It's kind of like need a refresher. It's some similar to like. Oh, like a shuffleboard type okay. of thing. Okay. You know, you got a, a ball, and you, but it's like these balls, and it's like yeah. in, this, in these and then, r- fine rocks, and you got to like, knock, like knock it out. Yeah, you can knock them together. You know, get them closer. Okay. Something about getting close enough. Or okay. Stuff like that. So yeah, you can knock each other out. So there's this bocce ball, and this is like a Thursday night. So it's yeah. another. Uh, it's, uh, we'd we'd always um, get this on the way out of out of town oh yeah that was usually one of our first stops on the trip nice so they'd they'd treat us like rock stars there it was a nice outdoor patio they'd give us wine or they had a beer and all kinds of stuff yeah all kind they'd feed us feed us well put us up for the night and and they had a cool little stage out there so yeah that was usually the the um 
first stop on the tour. That's awesome. Yeah. And was that like how many years into music was that for you? Do you, do you think that was hmm, into music yeah. or well, into like yeah. like playing gigging and yeah yeah you know, yeah into gig yeah. professionally? That was probably back in that's how it feels like 15 2015 yeah maybe 2016 somewhere in there so you're i think so you were in it for a little while up to that five point. six years yeah but so you'd been yeah and i didn't always have a band yeah and then when i had a band at first it wasn't those guys and we weren't traveling yeah when i started traveling i got larry full yeah, yeah i was gonna ask who was uh in the band there yeah um that was uh, Larry Fole on the drums, mm -hmm. and um, and then I think that is probably, excuse me, that is probably. Now that I think of it, the first tour that I did with Evan on bass. I was gonna say, was that Evan Grubbs? Yeah. I, it was kind of hard to tell, but I was wondering I if it was. It, and I think that's the one he's wearing, like a bl all black, like button-up shirt. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's the first nice, tour dude. that he's ever, that he ever did with us. That's awesome. That was a great video. Like, yeah. uh, especially like back when it was taken. Like, oh, that was. I mean, it sounded good. And yeah. Different camera angles. It was awesome. Yeah, man. and I because I think if I remember right, the reason why we have that is because that was Evan's first trip, and I yeah. think he brought some stuff and mm. set it up and and Try gave to me capture the, that. Yeah, that's fucking yeah, cool. Yeah. Leave it to Evan. Yeah. to pull through. So that oh, was man. always a fun place, and we thought we were going to play there. Um, I was wanting to go back just on this trip, this couple that I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go back to Walnut Street Winery. Yep. If any musician out there, you know, hit them up. They don't. They uh, yeah, it's it's a great fun. He's that's he, awesome. Lauren's a great guy. <laughs> He's Hell hilarious. Yeah. And they do gigs like what you said on the weekdays too, right? They're, yeah, Thursday, on a Thursday, yeah. right? Yeah. And oh, and they're from uh, like Austria or something. Austria. Like that. Yeah. He's, and then they just have a small yeah, he's or totally, a, a winery. And yeah, he's totally like really cool dude. <laughs> that's badass, dude. So what would you say um, after all of these years that you've been playing, do you have any particular show that stands out as being a particular, a, a rough one? Oh, uh, like a rough night. Like, a rough oh, night, like God, oh, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I can give you one of mine if, 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 if you want to feel loose. <laughs> Because I got a few. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have quite a few of those uh, lonely nights where I drove too far for uh, not enough money and no, not enough people really cared. Uh, and <laughs> oh, man. That is the worst, dude. Oh, man. Just playing your heart out up there. Yeah. And then there, you might get like one slow like. <laughs> Yeah, you know? just because, oh, just because he lost all hope and he knows you're about to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, oh, this poor bastard up here. Oh, those gigs hurt, dude. But hey, on the flip side now, what is? do you have a gig that sticks out as your favorite? Um, yeah, well, you know, I have so many. Yeah. Oh, man. There's, th there's so many for different reasons, I guess, uh, so many gigs stand out to me just from what I remember the band sounding like or mm -hmm. what the sound, how, you know, how good yeah. the sound was or how the, 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 or the crowd, you know, the different things and mm -hmm. everybody reacted differently or, you know, or the meaning of, you know, the vibe, every yeah, kind of show has a different vibe. So I remember yeah. all these different things and, and so many of them stand out to me, but, um, I think one of one I, maybe one of the one of my most favorite was probably down at the Slippery Noodle. We had Gibson was younger. He was probably like fifteen, fourteen, or fifteen. Yeah. So we had to like you know make sure he just went from the stage to outside. Yeah. And that, you know, yeah. And uh, so, so and then we also had I think we had Jeff Lagavine on drums. Nice. And then. Um, uh, Philip Fricks playing some congas and some percussion stuff. That's fun. And then I think we had organ player, keyboard player, and bass player. And I think it was Steve Harshman on bass oh, that night. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the whole ensemble. Yeah. It, it just sounded yeah. so big, and the, and it was packed, oh. uh, and the the balcony was packed. People yeah. were like looking over, just like standing over, like you know, nice. just Receptive. lining up, you know. Yeah. It was. We just rocked the place. That's it was, fucking awesome. That was probably one of the 
ones that really stand out as just memorable. That's you know? badass. And I know that you guys played at Legends too, Buddy Guys Bar in oh, yeah. Chicago. Yes. Right? How yes. was that? How did, oh, dude. Dude, I mean, Buddy Gosh. Guys, one of my heroes. Dude, it was. They were so nice, and they were just like, "Okay, you boys from Indiana." Yeah, <laughs> but, hell yeah. But man, they treated us like rock stars, and yeah. uh, it was. They were so cool. I didn't get to meet Buddy or nothing, but all the staff and all the Dude, guys. And yeah. Mark Maddox, I got to. I met him. <coughs> That's how I got in there, and he's plays guitar in Buddy's band and stuff. Oh. He's a super cool dude. That's awesome, just man. To, just, and uh, so going there, you know, you're like. Okay, yeah, I got this. Okay, yeah, man, this is cool. All right, man. Mm-hmm. No matter what you think, no matter what you, as soon as you step out on that stage, it changes everything. Yeah, dude. I mean, that's a real <laughs> blues joy. You know, yeah. Chicago don't fuck around with their blues. Oh man, man. And now you're standing <laughs> out there right in front of everyone. Yeah, dude. The buddy guy thing right behind you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that. That's a big deal, man. Dude, the buddy guy's legends. Yeah, it was. I, I was. I was trying to contain myself, but I was like, this is on the inside. I was vibrating on the inside. <laughs> oh, yeah, you never know. You're, you're just thinking like, oh, buddy's, I know he's back there watching yeah, me right now. Yeah. <laughs> he's back in the corner. You know, and they're videoing it and everything. And it's yes. like, you know, you, oh, this dude. is your one shot or, you know, not your one shot, but this is the, you know, what you've been thinking about. Yeah. You dude. know, yeah. this is your chance. And, um, gotta kill it. So, yeah, you gotta walk out there. And that was definitely a lesson. And, uh, and I think actually some point up there I was like, well, I know I told, I just, I confessed. I was like on the microphone. I was like, Hey, you know, my, we're the Jason Wells band. It's the first yeah. time here. I said, I'll just tell you, man, I'm, I'm nervous, but I don't <laughs> care. Here we go. Yes, I start, dude, you know? <laughs> dude yeah. how could you not be yeah. nervous? So oh, I figured, you know, the best thing, uh, might as well relate to them if they're going to see it. Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, dude, that honestly, I, I was thinking, that, that honesty with the crowd goes a long way. You know, you sure. just let them know what you're feeling, yeah. what's going on, I'm, man. I'm human. Yeah, we're yeah. all human. I, I, yeah. Yep. So it was definitely, I got to do it twice. And nice. It was, uh, so they let me come back. <laughs> it, was really, it was really good. Hell yeah. The, better, the second time was a little better, uh, but still, it was still nervous, uh, you know, yeah. I think. But it's I mean, just, you at least knock some of the, you know, Yeah, that the first initial, like, oh, of okay, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But definitely, I mean. And it, the second time, I think, Oh, the second time we went up there, I had my van, which I don't have anymore. Mm-hmm. That's another long story it involves Springfield. Um, but uh, second time we went up there, we had the, my big tour van. We had the benches set up different. We had a bunch of benches in there nice. and because um, it was a while back. And so we had, let's see, I know we had a six, maybe a six or seven piece band that Damn. I took up there. Yeah, <laughs> I think huge. I had conga. Another guitar. I think it took Gibson on guitar that time, and we had Kong's bass, drum, and uh, so whatever that is. And then we brought. So then we were like, then we were like, um, well, hey, so and so is here. Can they ride along? Well, we got room. Well, hey, <laughs> they showed in. up. Can they? Yeah, ride along. Dude. So then, and we had a fill-in bass player, and it was uh, Jerome. Jerome. Uh, anyway, from oh yeah, I know Jerome. Yeah, and um, so. So that Jeff was Jeff was late. We had to go pick him up, and then <laughs> he wasn't ready, so we had to wait on him. Typical and then... Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, brother. Call him out. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's okay. been. We it's all in good. It all in good fun. All in good fun. <laughs> oh, it was a great time. So we all drove up there. It was yeah. it was a great time. That was the second time, and it was funny because Jerome was kind of nervous, and I was like. I would hey, fucking be too, dude. I said, he was. Oh, and then we found out we we're gonna play again Saturday. We, we, a gig, a, a gig showed up at the Lafayette Theater for nice. that Saturday. This Hell was yeah. like a Wednesday or something. Damn. So we're like, "Hey guys, y'all want to play again on Saturday?" Yeah. And they're all like, "Yeah." Fuck yeah. So the whole van was like, "Yeah, we'll do it." So they were up there, at buddy guys, and like, "Hey Jerome, um, don't mess up tonight. If you mess up tonight, I'll never have you play with me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> dude, the pressure is real. <laughs> Hey, hey, come on now. Those are those big leagues, man. No, it man. was fun. We had a great time. Ah, yeah, dude. Oh, hey, speaking of, this, you were talking about the Slippery Noodle. I have this one clip here. So what I did was I went to the first video and then to something more recent. And there's this video here. Let's check this out. Well, playing music in a rock and roll band and traveling all across this land just when you think Thing I've seen, but sure had fun and 
How did all this come about? Well, we um, we got um, Gemon Brothers, I believe that is his name. Uh, is on Facebook. It's G E I M A N. Okay. Brothers, and they do a lot of video production. Nice. And they, they're great guys. He's a great guy, and um, so he came out and got all the sound and got the, all the cameras hooked up. And Dude. Yeah, he had like multiple, multiple cameras. And he yeah. Did, he did a really good job for it a really, looks, really good price. But It looks it was, and sounds yeah. wow. So, yeah. yeah. We knew we were going to have a, a cool show, and, and we wanted to, um, you know, we wanted to, well, we have Gibson and George now where, you know, the band has been, evolved and yeah. rotated and sure all kinds of things forever changing yeah. and yeah and uh so we wanted to get make sure we get some some updated video and and we knew that was going to be a fun show at the slippery that's noodle awesome so yeah so when was that was that it was last what is this june june yeah that was last september awesome so yeah we even it's like we outdate ourselves in about i don't know about two and a half weeks or oh so yeah weeks. Dude. <laughs> hey man and that's shit just yeah Keep it, keep them pumping, man. <laughs> keep them pumping. Yeah, that's uh, that. I mean, if we have when you have videos of that like production level and just the the quality of the sound and the songs and the playing, you got to keep those things alive and keep putting yeah. them out there for people yeah. to hear. Because I'd never, I I hadn't came across that, and I was really excited. To, I was like, damn, this is fucking hot. Oh, well, cool. Thank Hell you, yeah. man. Thank you, dude. It was really awesome Thank to you. come across that. But uh, yeah, so I. I don't know. I really want to just keep this thing going. I really want to help build a community, you know, and I want to have musicians just come and hang out with me and talk about yeah. what they do. Cause I, I want some insight in on other people's processes and how they do music. Cause everybody does yeah. it their own way. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. You know? And I think for me, I just, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted really until I just wanted to be able to play play guitar, play music. I love music and I love people. Yeah. And so my goal has always been to bring people together or to, you know, if you got something to say or, you know, and all that good stuff. But then really be able to and, and, and how my band operates is like, you know, be really good at it and then use what you're really good at it to bring out the song and the you know the feeling and the emotion of it and yeah. you know and let that translate to people and then that brings people together you know yeah it definitely does and um you know so that's always what i've been about because i think we need more of that yeah you know some people are in it for their own you know lots of different things yeah definitely but, i mean uh, it's it's tough but i really think at the end of the day the most like beneficial for everybody is to have some sort of collaborative effort and to all kind of, you know, push each other because this business of music is already hard enough. You know what I mean? And I don't know, a lot of people can be assholes, but the older I get and the more I play and I just, music is something that you can't judge too critically or too harshly because it's, it's, it's all subjective. It's all, yeah. You know what you think's good, what you like to play or yeah. to listen to, and you know, and, and where somebody else is coming from, you know, it could be like, wow, they must be really struggling. Yeah, you know, could definitely. Be, you know, um, or you know, even if it's dark, or even if it's yeah. something you don't agree with, or if yeah. even it's whatever, you know. Yeah. And and music is yeah, it's very subjective or very objective. It's very objective. Just yeah. very like you could, you know, some of my songs are like that, and lots of lots of stuff is like that. And uh, that's what is the beauty of it. But then the artist sometimes can or doesn't always have to, but the artist can have something to say, and I could be very direct as well. Yeah. You know, and that's the beauty of of art that this in it itself can be very objective to yeah. 
what it, you know, I don't know, I'm kind of getting off, but that's kind of what I think, you know, yeah, about dude. art and music. And, and I think it, we're all created yeah. to be creative, really. It, well, I think we are, too. And I think it's just how you express it. And I think everybody has their own creativity. And some people try to, oh, I'm, I'm not creative. I, well, everybody. Yeah, everybody Everybody's is. got something yeah. in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody does. And that's the human spirit. Yeah. That's what's pushed us along to keep yeah. moving down the yeah. line of life. Yes. <laughs> and 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 it's and it's the creative part. It's not the work part. And the work part, unfortunately, has snuffed out a lot. Of, all, some of a lot of the creative it's, out of people. And that's like I, that's and that's the job of a professional musician. Is now that you say that, like to balance that, to yeah. balance that like business side of it, and then keep your creativity spark in you still. Yeah. But don't let the business of it beat you down to where yeah. you lose it and you become. Yeah. You know, cold and callous to it all. Yeah, it, yeah. Because that can de- definitely happen. It, it can. You know? Yeah, it'll suck. that that getting sucked into the business part of it will suck your soul. It will. You know, it's, totally, it, dude. Yeah. And then there's a the bad side. Yeah. You know, and like it's um, you know, and I've I really feel like for me, I'm for I feel fortunate that I feel like that I can hold. I stay. I feel like I've try to stay true to what I think and not, you know, you, you be yourself and yeah. if you, you can say what you want to say and let other people say and be what they're going to say or play the notes they want to play. Yep. And that's cool. But, you know, I think I feel there's so many things in the music industry and the music business is just that it's industry and it's business. Mm-hmm. But if you focus on the music and the people, then the rest that's, will take care of itself. That's the key. I mean, because like, you know, a lot of the times, I'd venture to say most of the time, the people that are on the business end of music um, typically aren't musicians themselves. Or maybe they wanted to be musicians, but they gave up and yeah. they decided that they would chase the money path. Yeah. Or the money just, side of it. Instead. Or they just realize how to make money you know, <laughs> yeah. off of musicians. Because <laughs> it, who are too it ain't playing the bars. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that shit's hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? All right. So then they, yeah, they move on to the management side. Uh, yeah. And the the business side of things, right? Yeah, and then and then it turns into a lot of stuff that I try to avoid. Fuck yeah, possible, you yeah, know. Yeah, totally. It's, it's uh, it's you know, but it's 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 like everything else. It's there's just I don't know. There's groups and different things, and just you know, you you, you got to have some business skills and business oh, mind totally. and you got to be yeah. business. But for me, and you know, I've always tried to, um, outweigh the personal relationship versus business. Yeah. You yeah. know, and when I can, or, I th- or, you know, at all possible. That know? probably speaks to your longevity, you know, like how long you've been playing music. I mean, you've been at it for quite a long time now and I don't see you slowing down anytime soon. No, just getting started. Really. Oh yeah, man. You made it through the <laughs> pandemic and you're still rocking and rolling, dude. Yeah. That was the test for everybody is making it through that shit out uh-huh. on the other side and you're still playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause uh, a lot of bands dropped off yeah. during that time yeah. for sure. Yeah. I know a lot of people that, yeah. 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 Didn't make it through. Yeah, dude. It's tough. It I was spent tough. a lot of time and trying to encourage musicians and get mm-hmm. them going and you know. But yeah, it was it's still it's still tough on a lot or some of them. It's yeah. still tough on the music industry in totally. general. Totally. Yeah. I know. mean every as everything kind of <clears throat> bounces out of that shit and back into some semblance of normal yeah you know it's it's, it's all br- you know yeah. I, I think it's all brand new yeah it, it's, it's, yeah that and but it has like you said it's brand new i think it's really opened the door to i don't know like i feel like so many like this podcast that we're doing right now i yeah. uh, you, you kind of realize like oh wait shit i i can do a lot more right on my own yeah you know than i ever thought was possible yeah you know and if you really you put your mind to it you yeah. You do some YouTubing and yeah. you figure some shit out. You <laughs> yeah, know what I right. mean? You start piecing some gear together. Like, oh, wait, wait, I can do a show. Wait, I can record my own music and release it. And yeah. it's, yeah. it's, there's no, there's no limits. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's kind of, at least for me, it kind of opened that up for me. Like, wait a minute, dude, I can do all this shit yeah. myself. And I think, I think um, where we are now, it's kind of a, it's new in the sense of, I think it um, gives 
these things and so many more people opportunities the opportunities the they they slow down to maybe find some opportunities mm-hmm. or 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 just go for the opportunity yeah. maybe you finally yeah or um or just seize the opportunity whatever and then it also leveled the playing field in a lot of ways as far as i feel like everybody is looking for more r- real mm-hmm. conversation more totally, real dude. things people are doing real important things that have value yeah you know um because i feel like there's a lot that i don't know just life was going too fast yeah you know, man. all this stuff and now people really value the important things kind of kind of more. like give you a, a different perspective like yeah it kind yeah. of slowed slowed society down a little yeah you know and yeah. kind of made you stop and smell the roses a little yeah. bit you know what i mean yeah and God, I was, I, oh shit, what was I going to say? I had a thought and I lost it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. But I think it's good because, I mean, it, 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 people want the quality and people yeah. are looking for value and, yeah. and family. The people, a lot of times I see people are more family oriented now and mm-hmm. more local things, you yeah. know, and even touring has changed in that way just because people's mindset has changed and so it changes habits and so this even just touring the different the places i go to yeah has been a little bit different just because of that mindset in different areas and all kinds of things so do you think you feel like the crowds are more eager to be there or do you feel like it's similar to what it was before or or more reactive Uh, what are you feeling it's it's um it's definitely, I think just now, honestly, what I'm seeing, I was, I was hope, I was probably just wishful thinking of really what, what I'm seeing just now this year, this summer mm-hmm. is really the first time that the people in general um, are coming out and going, okay, yeah, yeah this is. It's, yeah, people are doing stuff, and I want to do that too. And let's do this again. I definitely feel like I noticed a shift in in that aspect. I yeah. feel like more people are getting out of their comfort zones. You know, like where maybe they were just you know homebodies and they didn't really do a lot. They might be more inclined to go out to a show and take advantage of some of the shit that we didn't know that we were going to lose. Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? yeah. And, and, and I think that a lot of the mindset is a lot more local now. Yeah. Everywhere I go, it's a lot more local, I, you know? And yeah. I've noticed that it, a lot more appreciation. The local is local. bigger, yeah. but it's more local. You and know? A, a lot more appreciation for it. I feel yeah. like, uh, yeah. people are really just excited to, yeah, you know, here's just some like just like I think they got family oriented during COVID. Yeah, I think they got community oriented and and so on. Mm-hmm. And so just all these things are such a good thing. It's just, yeah, it's a ripple effect. And then take that family, inner folk, you know, focus on the family and then focus on their community, like we're talking about. And then I hear um, my drummer George said that um, one of the guitar companies had a record year, year guitar sales. So that means all these young kids come yes. up in their garages. How, you know what I how mean? could I have not thought? Yeah, of course. Like so, everybody's stuck at home, dude. Right. So we're just seeing, you know, right now. We're going to see some prodigies. Two, yeah, we're just seeing like two years of really hard times. And yeah, this dude. is the first year of like people are, you know, just kind of coming out and trying a lot of stuff yeah. and a lot of doing, going and do it, taking advantage of the local stuff. I see, you know, a lot more. I feel like people are more willing to burst out of their shell and try new shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, try to try to go for that, you know, that dream, whatever it was, you know. Yeah, that's for sure. Try to go for it because yeah. there's no reason not to. Yeah. The right. only thing that separates you from achieving your dreams is your willingness to go out and pursue it. Yeah. And if you don't go out and make some shit happen, then ain't nothing going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. That's right, yeah. dude. I mean, it's like, God, you just, you have to, you have to do. You yeah. must do. You have to do it. You yeah. have to do something yeah. or else nothing will yeah. fucking change. And, and I just, I was just telling Gibson that I was like, most things in the world, if you think about it, no matter what it is, mm-hmm. it's just somebody that decided to do, do something. Yeah. And if they didn't decide to do it, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't exist. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, I that's, mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah. Like, I mean, 
of course, there's all sorts of things in between. But at the end of the day, the cut and dry is you can either choose to do something or not. Yeah. You might have a lot to learn. Yeah. It depends on what you're going to do. But. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and just like what we're doing right now, dude, like I just figured, fuck, I have the, some gear. I, yeah. you know, I've got friends yeah. and I, why not try to yeah. pull something together, man? Yeah. And, and, and I'm already, I'm already telling, I was talking to a musician buddy of dude, mine on the way over here. That's like, awesome. Hey, you know, I'm doing this, hit him up. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd love to have as many people as I can. I've got, dude, I've got like five or six uh, guests. I know Gibson's coming on. I'm going to be talking with yeah, Gibson yeah. for a little while. And I don't know, maybe some members of Mucklow. I didn't know if he was able to have them come on or not. Yeah. But I realized like, oh, I got a couple more inputs here. I can have yeah. a, a couple other folks yeah, yeah. here to hang out and talk. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, dude, well, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. What sure. do you have going on? What, what is, what's on the books? So we have, let's see, coming up um, June 30th. I think it's a Thursday. Okay. And it's at the Abbey and Libby uh, Amphitheater up in Delphi. Mm. It's a really, really cool brand new park up there. Yeah. And um, we have Grace Scott doing an acoustic uh, set. Nice. And then Malachi Jaggers and then my band will be there. And then we have we'll have a side stage going on. Okay. And um, we're gonna have some vendors out there. It's, I think uh, we're gonna have some, um, like, we're gonna have some really cool stuff. It's gonna be family oriented. It's gonna be free. Mm -hmm. It could be accepting donations, and it's uh, part of the Music Matters uh, festival. Dude, that's so awesome. So just kind of a little satellite show for that, just promoting uh, live music and some of the local stuff going on. It's awesome. Uh, they'll have concessions open there too. So, and is there more music matters events going on this summer too? Yeah, we're. I'm tr well, I'm trying to put together. It's, it's been rough this year. Sure. But um, so some of the other festivals that I got that I'm playing at just got got them wrapped up. So yeah. Now I'm trying to get my festival wrapped up. Uh, cool. But that's going to be the first weekend of August, um, August fifth and sixth, I believe it is. Okay. And um, we got some really great artists lined up, and um, I'm trying to get all that put up. That's um, I think basically people are probably going to just show up there yeah. anyway <laughs> because everybody's talking about it. Hell yeah, dude. Word <laughs> so of mouth first travels. Week, yeah, the first weekend of August at the Darlington Conservation Club. Okay. It's going to be like 20 bucks a ticket, 25 30 if you want to camp. And okay. Then, if you have an RV or something, it might be a little bit more. Is that like for the whole weekend? The whole weekend, That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah, a yeah. great deal, dude. And there's campfire jams yes. on Friday night. Usually it's the big night for campfire jams. I love it's, it. Oh, man, it's so fun. That we, sounds fucking awesome. I mean, most, I think, like, there's, this will be like the sixth or, this will be the sixth year. So, like, pretty much every year there's somebody playing music till the sun comes up the next morning. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, now it's kind of an ongoing thing. That's you know? amazing, Yeah, there's, dude. it's, it's so many people out there just all, we had a we've had a upright bass out there by the campfire. Oh, we've had all kinds the of fiddlers cool, style, yeah, yeah. And all kinds of guitars and just all kinds of stuff. And everyone's singing. Oh. There's like 30, 50 people just kind of milling around. Everybody's singing songs. That's it's, awesome. Everybody's just chill. Hell yeah. You know, yeah. No, no, just no worries music. or nothing, and just singing along, jamming, yeah. having a few cold ones. Somebody else will step up and lead a song, and yeah. everybody jump in. Just jump all around, just hand keep it on off, going and keep on going. Yep, <laughs> hand the baton off <laughs> onto the next dude. It's so fun. That's awesome. Do you have any recordings or anything like that you're working on, or anything new coming out that we need to know about? Yeah, so I have vinyl, or I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, Volume one on vinyl. That's out right now. Hell yeah. And then we're working on vinyl or volume two. So it's pretty much done. I think we have a couple tunes to to go into the studio to, to finish, but uh, cool. we're not, but we might have enough. So that's about done. That's awesome. And I was hoping to have it done already, but yeah, shit happens. Lots of setbacks. Yeah, dude. These, I, it takes it takes yeah. time. But it it's, takes time. We're trying to get that on a vinyl. So. That'd and be fun. Uh, yeah, it's some really really cool stuff on there. Oh yeah, where do people find you? Um, everywhere. What's really weird and scary, but also really cool, is you can just Google Jason Wells. Yeah. And all my stuff comes up. Hell but, yeah! Yeah, so love it. And um, JasonWellsBand dot com is cool. my website. Awesome. Um, but yeah, on Spotify, like all the online platforms, and and also what's really I think is really cool. <laughs> Is uh, like on your stories, on your Facebook, and mm -hmm. TikTok, and Instagram. Yeah, you can 
search Jason Wells and my music will come up so you can put Jason Wells music in your Yeah, in your videos. videos yes, yeah. dude. That is awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's something really cool that's come out recently. Yeah. That is yeah, that's really awesome. Yeah. So Jason Wells on Facebook, Instagram. Yep. Okay. I'm out there. Jason Wells band also. Be yeah. sure to follow him guys. Be sure to check out and uh be sure to check out Jason Wells band.com or Jason Wells band. Jason Wells band.com and are you going to have information up on there about the uh, Music Matters events as well? Yeah, I'll be linking to that. That'll be on my website when the um, okay. when I get the tickets and all that. It'll be on my at least it'll be on there. Music Matters is a separate thing, but it'll be linked on there. Yep. Sweet. Well, hey, do you have anything else for the audience? Um, hey, thanks for listening. I appreciate it. And I love to see you at the shows. Hell yeah. All right. Hey, everybody, Jason Wells, make sure to uh, tune in next time, uh, with, uh, for let's talk music and we'll talk some more fucking music. Hey, Jason, <laughs> I uh, appreciate hanging out with you this evening. Thank you, man. It's Thank you for fun. having me. All right. See ya. See you later guys. <laughs>